don't like it, please don't use it, don't bother. And if you don't use it, we promise we won't hate you or just, uh, just a little bit. Uh, the genesis of it, I, I wanted to write things, I wanted to write novels. You know, it's, uh, it's some kind of pick-up line, say, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm a writer. Uh, and I was looking for tools to help me writing efficiently, and uh, I stumbled upon Writeroom. What is Writeroom? Writeroom is a full-screen monochrome text editor. Yeah, full-screen monochrome, that is uh, uh, black on white or uh, green on, on black, etc. Uh, text editor, but uh, I thought to myself, what's the point? Yeah, you know, it edits text, just like a normal text editor, but you can edit any k kind of text with a text editor, but the fact that it's full screen, and it's completely full screen, you have absolutely no menu bar at all, focuses you on writing, you have absolutely no distraction when you're full screen, and when it's only text, and text only, uh, you don't have to bother about, uh, oh, is it bold, is it emphasis, is it a title, is it... We don't care, we don't have to care. You just write. Formatting will be later on. Write room. It's a full screen, monochrome, text editor, and it costs 24.95 US dollars. And it only works for the Mac. Uh, that's not what I wanted to have, I wanted to have it for Linux, you know. I ran Ubuntu for years, so I wanted it to have it on Linux. I thought to myself, well, uh, a full-screen text editor, that, that must happen, that must be already there. So um, I searched a friendly web and I stumbled upon this uh, post on the Ubuntu forums where uh, a Nova man, and Nicolas P. Rougier, uh, did a pyrum.py single Python script with uh, 500 lines of code only, 18 kilobytes, including comments, uh, that just worked. It's full screen text editor. It's, it's nothing, uh, it, that's my fault. I just changed the image. It's just having a screenshot of a text editor is not that interesting. It was still a full screen monochrome text editor and it cost nothing because it was GPL version 3 and it runs on GNU Linux. Winner! Uh, you may think now, uh, my favorite text editor does exactly the same. All I have to do is to uh, hit the Control alt f one key and run Vi or Emacs or whatever. I don't care, but uh, you know, real programmers, they use Emacs. No, they use Vim. No, you use Ed, Cat, or the butterfly that uh, changes the, the ripples of the atmosphere, of the upper atmosphere. Uh, Pyrium is not for geeks. Pyrium is not for coders, hackers. Hackers have tons of tools in order to edit text because text is their basis. That's, that's their basic work. So it's not for you, it's for usual normal people, normal Joe, who wants to edit text in his own environment, except that instead of having many windows opened, it just has um, uh, one single frame Black and white. By the way, XKCD rocks. Uh, the pyrim.py, there are many pros, in my own opinion. Uh, it just works, first. It was lightweight, just an 18 kilobyte uh, Python script is nice. It's in written in Python, so I can grok the code, understanding it, and eventually uh, modify it. And I can modify it and publish modifications because it's GPL version 3. The cons were there were no actual really handy uh, uh, theme management. If you, have, if you want to have green on black instead of uh, uh, white on black, etc., it was hard-coded in the, in the script, so it was not that nice. It was not localizable. I'm French, I uh, want to have all of my software in my own language, and I wish that everyone can have uh, software in Spanish, in, in, in German, in whatever, I don't care. Yeah. And it was a little bit rough at the edges. Uh, a lot of things were missing, in fact. So um, I decided to fork it. Uh, fork are interesting uh, because you can do it. It's GPL version 3, so I started up a, a, a project on, on Launchpad. Uh, the, the advantages of Launchpad is that you have the code management. You can have any, as, in, as many branches as possible you want. It's easier for the translators if you want to use Rosetta. There is a bug manager that I'm using 
usually as a task manager, and there are mailing lists so you can discuss topics. Uh, started up a, a Parium.org uh, domain name, very simple website, so just uh, a few few lines of, uh, of uh, information about the project, an RIC channel on Freenode, and then a very nice bunch of developers just joined in. Um, so when the project started to become a little bit bigger, we had to uh, organize it in teams. So there is a Pyrum team, anyone can, can join in. Pyrum Bug Squad, if you want to get spammed by uh, bug mates, you can subscribe it. Uh, Pyrum Dev is uh, only for developers, hackers, it's on invitation only. And Pyrum admins, that's the basic administration, uh, releasing, etc. And uh, there is, in fact, there is one key developer on this project, which is Florian Heiner. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it to the first demo. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Um, uh, there are plenty of other uh, people who, uh, who contributed it, and you may note that I'm not on this list because um, I, I've become really too busy to, to contribute to this project anymore, so I'm just supervising it from, uh, from, uh, from a distance, but I'm still following it very closely in order to keep it as simple as possible, as usable as possible, etc. But Florian Heiler rocks. Uh, what are the main features now? Uh, it uh, still edit text and text only, no formatting. You can edit multiple documents at the same time if you want. Uh, it has an autosave function which is uh, much more interesting than the other autosaves that I've experimented. I've uh, often lost my data because of, of autosave. In fact, uh, Pyrum saves uh, your current document. When you manually save it, it saves it on, for example, uh, example.txt. And when it's autosave, it's on a temporary file. So any automatic save is on this temporary file. And when you manually want to actually currently record your data, it records on the current file, on the actual current file. So that saves you a lot of time uh, trying to get your, backward, uh, your backup. Uh, full screen works on dual head which was pretty cool that uh, I have uh, a dual head at work and, and unfortunately it didn't work, now it works. And we have several available th themes. They can, you can send themes, by the way, via Launchpad. Uh, any kind of color you want for text, for background, just works, that's fine. And uh, the themes are customizable, that is to say if you import one theme and you want to change it, you can do it very, very easily via the preference dialog. It's translated in a lot of languages. We got Welsh. <laughs> uh, these are the complete translation for the, the, the earlier releases. Now, uh, uh, the next release is not yet translated in as many languages as, as this. Uh, plan features. Uh, spell check, that would be very handy for writers in order to have their spell check, the actual spell check in their own language. Uh, we want to drop JTK source view because it prevents us from being uh, completely fully compatible with uh, Windows and Mac OS X. We want to port Pyrum to uh, uh, Windows and Mac OS X and using JTK source view doesn't help. Uh, maybe other themes, maybe what you want, your wish here. Go out on, on the website on, on Launchpad file a bug report saying, I would like this to happen, and we'll plan this or not. Uh, in a more distant future, we had the idea of a, of a theme bazaar, when anyone can send themes for Pyroom and with a screen capture of the, of the theme, and people could download it and install it on Pyroom. Why not? It's a web 2.0 system. Uh, or maybe a plugin system, because a lot of people are asking for very simple syntax highlighting, such as a markdown or restructured text, etc. And we don't want to do it right now, currently. But for example, we, we would like to uh, say you select a text and you hit Control B in order to have a bold, and it just adds the stars at the end and at the beginning of the text. So that would be quite handy, but we need a plugin system in order to do, to do that, and it's not yet ready. And if you have a genius ID, go ahead, please, dive in. Please don't ask for syntax highlights. I told you, this is not for coder, this is not an ID, this, it's just a text editor. 
we won't do Python syntax highlighting. We won't do um, uh, C++, Java, or, or baguette and snake syntax highlighting. And if you want specific mark markup highlights, just wait for the plugin system. And we won't have any IRC client integrated into Pyrum. Never. If you want to try it, just it's just a Python setup usual normal um, uh, operation, or you install Pyrum on Fedora, it's been packaged for Fedora very quickly. Uh, it's packaged in Debian Seed, so it's packaged for Ubuntu 8.10, uh, uh, it's not 8.10, it's 9. Point, uh, yes, it's packaged in the, P, uh, in the PPIs for Intrepid, and it will be packaged uh, in Multiverse uh, for Jonti, uh, which is about to be released in April. And if you want to package it for your favorite distro, please dive in, go ahead. To get in touch, the Launchpad website, which is the main website, or pyrum.org, in order to have the download very easily, very quickly, and a hash pyrum and free node. So that's it. That's the end. Thank you. <laughs> I think we have five minutes for questions. That's a long time. Tony. Nah, yeah, that's a, that's a, an interesting question. In fact, uh, the first time that I just tried to launch Pyrum on a dual head, it just split it through through the two screens, and I had the the, the actual window, the actual text window, right in the middle of it. That was really wrong. <laughs> uh, so now, when you use it on a dual head, when you when you launch it on one, uh, for example, your right hand side uh, screen, the the text is on the right hand side and the other side is completely blank. It's completely black if you have a black background, for example. So it works that way and that's much better and much more interesting. Yes, please? What text editor do you use to develop Pyro? Uh, I use gedit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, Florian Heiler, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> One more, yeah? So, uh, the theming doesn't include fonts or is it? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, th um, uh, the question was about fonts. Uh, you can use uh, the font you want. It's a monospace, it's not a monospace, it's uh, whatever. It's in your theme. A theme is its colors and, and the font and the uh, width of text. It's p in percentage per your... Uh, um, uh, it's percentage with, uh, with, uh, with the width of, the, of your screen. 45, 60%, whatever. Yes? What is that? Localize. Uh, uh, there is help. There, there are on, on the bottom of, uh, of the of the of the screen of the of the text uh, window. There is text saved uh, saying uh, that this document has been saved and it disappears. And for example, uh, control um, uh, control H. It's help. So this help is localized. It's very simple. They are, they are not. No, this it's not a large amount of of. of uh, of uh, strings, but you need them, uh, of course, in order to, if someone doesn't absolutely speak English, you definitely need to translate even the smallest, the smallest string. Uh, question. Yeah. Uh, is, is there a uh, Debian package? Yes, it's, uh, there is a Debian package in SID. SID, uh, it's the unstable uh, Debian. Well, I, I don't actually currently know if it's going to be in the next Debian release in, uh, in February, yeah. one week, one week? Oh, hopefully. Anyone else? No? No, now try to use it. Thank you very much.